Hey, it's Paul Hill from ITFleet.com, and in this lesson, I'm going to be explaining group policy precedents. Now, precedence means the order or the way that things are done, and with group policy, there is a specific order in which group policy objects or GP settings are applied. It's important to understand this for, because from time to time, you'll have multiple GPOs trying to configure the same setting, and you have to understand the precedence in order to understand which settings will be applied and which settings will be ignored. Now, the order that group policy runs is this. It starts with the local group policy. That is, if you hit the Windows button right now and type in gpedit.msc, you will be able to edit the local group policy. Now, this is the first thing that is applied to the computer, and it's also viewed as the least important. Next, any group policy objects that are assigned to your site are then applied. And this means that it overwrites any conflicts that it may find between the local and the site group policy. So if you configure a desktop wallpaper in the local group policy, and you configure it in the site policy, the site policy will take precedence over the local group policy because it was applied after the local group policy. Next in the order is the domain policy. So any policies assigned to the domain will now be applied on top of the site and local settings. Next, we have the organizational unit. And this is any GPO that is linked to a specific OU. Also, that goes for sub OU. So if there's an organizational unit within an organizational unit, the sub OU will be applied last, and therefore its settings will take precedence over anything that is above it. Now, finally, we have enforced group policy objects. Now, this is any GPO where you've right clicked and choose to enforce the GPO. So just a quick recap, you start with local, that's the least important GPO because it's the first one that is computed. You end with enforced group policy objects. So if there are conflicting settings between the local and the enforced, since the enforced group policy objects will be run last, they will take precedence. So remember the last GPO to be applied always wins. Now you can remember this order by remembering the acronym LSDO or LSDO. So it stands for Local Site Domain OU and Enforced. All right, now we have to consider computer versus user. Now within a GPO, you have a computer and a user configuration. The computer configuration is applied first and the user configuration is applied second. We said that the settings that are applied last are the ones that are going to win. So if you have conflicting settings between your computer and user configuration, the user configuration will win that battle. So the computer configuration is the least important and the user configuration is the most important. Now here's a picture just showing a GPO and the group policy management editor. You can see at the top, you have the computer configuration and the user configuration. Hopefully that helps you relate to what we're talking about. Now let's take a wallpaper scenario. Let's say we have five GPOs that are configuring the same wallpaper settings. So someone has gone into all these GPOs and they said, I want this desktop background to be configured and it's different for each GPO. Which GPO is gonna win? Well, in order to know this, we're gonna to have to remember LSDO, which is local, site, domain, OU, and enforced. And in this first little diagram that we have here, we have ITF Workstation 01. It has a local policy that is configured to use the background udemy.jpg. In this scenario, the local is gonna win because nothing else is configured. But say another administrator comes behind and they add a site policy that configures pauliscool.jpg. We can remember that the S or site is a second item in the order of precedence, so pauliscool.jpg will take effect over udemy.jpg. So this desktop background will be assigned. Now, if someone came through and assigned a domain policy and configured itflea.jpg should be the background, then that GPO will overwrite the udemy.jpg and the pauliscool.jpg, and it will take precedence. So to help you understand what's going on, is your computer is going to update its group policy. It's going to use this local policy. It's going to apply udemy.jpg as the background. Then it's going to get down to the site policy and it's going to apply pauliscool.jpg. And then it's going to get to the domain policies and it's going to apply itflea.jpg. And this is the final setting that will be set in place on this computer. Now we also have organizational units. So if we had a GPO assigned to the OU domain computers, and it configured ITF logo to be the background, then it would take precedence over all the other ones because it's at the organizational unit level. Now, if we had a sub OU and it was called workstations, 
and we assigned a GPO to that sub OU called basketball.jpg, it would take effect over all of the GPOs above it. So we can see here we started with local, we went down to site, we went down to domain, and we went down to OU and then sub OU, and the sub OU is taking precedence over all of the other options. Now we still haven't covered enforced. So if we wanted to enforce one of these policies, say we take itflea.com and we enforce this policy, what do you think is going to win? Well, we know in our acronym, enforce is the last item in the order of precedence. So if we take a look, itflea.com, the domain policy that is enforced, will take precedence over all the other GPOs because it is enforced. Now with in-group policy, there's something called blocked inheritance. And this is a term that is used when it comes to organizational units. An OU can block its inheritance, which means only GPOs inside of that OU will apply, except for enforced GPOs that are above the OU. Now to block inheritance, you simply right click on the OU like you see in this image and you choose block inheritance. So in this particular circumstance, the test, you can barely see it here, but in the bottom there's test GPO. You can't, you can only see the first letter, the first two letters. So you see TE, that stands for test GPO. So if we were to block inheritance on this OU, the default domain policy would not apply, but the test GPO would apply, okay? Now let's take another example and let's just say at itflea.com, we have the itflea.jpg configured. And then at the OU IT flea, we have ITF logo, and then we have Paul is cool under administrators. And we can see that represented down here. Now the, or, the group policy objects are actually called IT flea.jpg. You wouldn't necessarily do that. You could do it that way, but normally it would be called something like desktop background or something silly like that. Just to make it clear, I've named them what the actual desktop background file name is, just to help it be a little bit more clear. So. In this particular scenario, we have itflea.jpg linked to itflea.com. We can see that's represented up here. Then we have itflogo.jpg linked to the itfleau. We can see that's referenced right here. And then under administrators, we have pauliscool.jpg. And we can see that is referenced right here. Now in this particular scenario, since we're going down to a sub OU, the pauliscool.jpg will win. Because remember, we have local site domain organizational unit and enforced. Now let's say if we blocked inheritance, what does that mean? What that means is the it flea.jpg still is not going to apply. The it flea logo.jpg is not going to apply. And Paul is cool.jpg is still going to apply. So nothing really changed except test GPO and default domain policy now no longer apply to the administrators OU. Now what if we enforce the it flea.jpg? You can see here that the icon has changed. This is the icon when you see it's locked, that means the GPO is enforced. And when you see this exclamation mark, that means the GPO is blocking inheritance. What's gonna happen in this particular circumstance is that itflea.jpg will take precedence because it is an enforced GPO. So remember, we have local, site, domain, we have organizational unit, and then we have enforced. So enforced always wins over all of those. In conclusion, the last GPO to be applied wins, and remember the acronym local site domain OU and enforced, which is LSDO or LSDOE. You can come up with any way that you want to remember it. Uh, I like to call it LSDO because that's just easy for me. But remember that acronym, and that's all we got to cover in this lecture. Now you understand group policy precedents. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. I enjoyed making it for you. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.